Young women have been growing up with an indoctrination of what womanhood is and what it should be. They've been taught everything that is in direct opposition to the Word of God. Young women who want to be different from the world are rare, but they are real. On this Rare But Real podcast, Audrey Brogy will often be joined by her daughter, Grace Anna, and her daughters-in-law, Maureen, Kesset, and Marilyn, who desire to be discerning in a day when everything seems to go against God's design. Join them in the journey of becoming rare but real. It takes courage and conviction. And now, Audrey Brogy. Hey there, I am so glad to be joined today by my daughter-in-law, Kessid. And one of the things I've loved doing this podcast, number one, is hearing from so many of you who are listening. I, I just love that. I love hearing your feedback. I love receiving your questions and your comments and um, and just the variety of the different things that you all have been asking us to address. And of course, uh, for those of you who follow along regularly, you know that we've talked about um, the mother-in-law daughter-in-law relationship recently and I and this last one was I was with my daughter and I mean uh, we did the po- I did the podcast with my daughter and we talked about our roles as wives with our husbands and I want to do that of course with Kesset and and Maureen as well but this particular question came in and um and I thought we're just gonna I'm gonna grab Kesset and we're gonna talk about this um but this particular woman wrote in and she said we have three kids, uh, ages five, uh, nine, five, and one, and we transitioned to homeschool last year. I'd love to hear a, quote, day in the life of sorts from you and or your girls who are homeschooling. I know it's impossible to fit it all in every day. Either school seems caught up or our chores seem caught up, but I'm sure you all have wisdom that would be very, be helpful. I appreciate you. And, you know, I was thinking, Kessid, when she said either school seems caught up or chores seems caught up, and we say, or laundry seems caught up, you could just add a myriad of things in there that we're mm-hmm. responsible mm-hmm. for. As my email, <laughs> my inbox is caught up. My, yeah, like, and when certain things yeah. are caught up, other things are lacking, and it's always that uh, thing of feeling like I'm never getting enough getting it done or I'm letting things fail here. I'm not meeting the needs over here like I should be because I don't know. I mean, I remember my days of homeschooling. I they were so often I just had to God always had to just remind me that he was in charge and he he cared more than I did and he was picking up the slack and I needed to walk with him and trust him and that I was not God always like you know being reminded I'm not God and so I can't do it all and although you know you you want I don't know and you just feel the weight of everything on your shoulders and then when you fail you beat yourself up so badly or Mm -hmm. you know and then or you think I didn't give this child enough attention or this child's going to be ruined because of this. In fact, Kesset, I was just reading in one of my old journals when I said, when I wrote, I sure hope my kids don't grow up and hate the way they were raised. I mean, I wrote that in my, mm. in my journal. I just read that today, this morning. And, um, and just, but then I, I, I went behind that, right behind that. I should have brought it up here to this room to read it because I went behind that and just said, but Lord, you've called us. The, you called us. We're, we're holding on to you as much as we know how, and we just have to trust you with with all of these things. I, it was something like that. It was just like always, you know, you have to bring yourself back into exactly to, to what the, you know, to, to focus on the Lord. So I will say a couple things and then I want to hear from you, Kessid, and, and because you're in the middle of it all right now. And, um, hey, and I'm going <laughs> to appreciate hearing from you. I like, I, the refresh will be great. So well, you can throw, kick us off. well, yeah, and you can throw any, you know, questions too, as we go along. Long because and I and I didn't do everything perfectly. My kids know that, um, and I know that. Um, but you know, we by God's grace, somehow we 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 got through it. But one of the things that that I learned and and had to continually learn that every year was different as I homeschooled my children, and um, and that that every year was like I, as I began to call it a changing dynamic. You know, a home life is never static; it's never the same. And you and sometimes when you feel so overwhelmed at a certain stage of your children's lives, you realize 
or you come to realize because you think it's going to be this way forever. No, they're going to grow. They're going to mature. They're going to get better at this. And sometimes it seems slow going when we're right in the throes of it, in the middle of it. But when you step back and you're able to realize this is the long game, this is like, you know, I have to step back and get the perspective. It kind of changes the day in and day out of, of in the throes of this child's never going to learn to read or I'm never going to mm-hmm. have you know, um, a, a, an organized schedule with my kids or, <laughs> or I'm never, you know, or whatever it is, you just can insert whatever it is. So, so that was one thing. And as I think back over the years of homeschooling my kids, I realized too, that the years that personally me as a mom enjoyed the most was when they were in the elementary years and I, I you know like mm-hmm. and I mean that in the sense because it was fun and they half the time didn't even know they were learning because it because I just the, this I guess just the style how I homeschooled them um you know it was it was fun but it still changed the dynamic because you feel the pressures I mean every year it changes because you feel the pressures of I got to make sure they're doing this I got to make sure they're learning this I got to make sure I'm on 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 um you know, on the right path here. And, mm-hmm. um, and then the other thing that I'll throw out too, cause I say it a lot since it's been, since it's, you know, I'm old is that vintage that I call always call myself vintage because, you know, of just all of the different things that are available now that weren't available. Um, when I was homeschooling mm-hmm. my children, but still the underlying principles and the way we beat ourselves up and the way we try to make things work, they're still all the same because no matter what generation it is. So I, that's the biggest thing for me was learning the the changing dynamics that the home's not static and learning through that of, you know, taking one year at a time and figuring out where this child is at and where, how I need to propel them and how I need to help them and what I can do together, what we have to do separately and organizing our lives. And there's a lot of specifics. Sorry, I dropped my book, mm-hmm. you know, that, that work well, into that, funny. but you I, go ahead. I No, I just, I feel like you saying that it's just like, wisdom right it's like teach me to have a heart of wisdom teach me to number my days because you do uh sometimes i think in in the mix of it in the throes especially with those younger kids the pre the preschool age kids Mm -hmm. going around it can just seem like oh i'm like drowning over here Mm -hmm. and you know and now (laughs) i've got a toddler stepping on me while i'm drowning and um but it's now being where I am, where my, my youngest one is seven mm-hmm. and my oldest is 13, I definitely don't have like a, oh man, uh, when am I going to get a break from this? It's, it's totally changed. And it's like, oh man, this is slipping away. Mm-hmm. This right. is such a right. short time. And like I, and this is, I've talked about this before when I was, um, you know, going through board books and just thinking like, wow, nobody's using these right now. Yeah. Instead of that being like, oh, oh good, I can finally, you know, get rid of them. Get rid of these. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is, this is sad. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, I just like, what a gift. I, I love every second that I've been able to have with these kids. Yep. And I just see, okay, it's going quickly. And so I don't want to do that in a, in a like, oh, fatalistic sad right a woe is me kind of way but like okay if i if this is all the time i have i want to capitalize on the time that i have and and run run the race basically right. so um i think that would be my uh, just going along with that one of my first encouragements for for people who are on this journey with younger kids yes it does change every year and what you think you are drowning in and you're it's never going to get fixed if that's the word like right I know next you thing mean. you know yeah. it's, it's gonna be a non-issue that's it's right be a non-issue um I remember one year we were really struggling with math with one of my kids and I started praying about it um and just asking for the Lord because I thought okay I have four kids I'm homeschooling right now I can't spend an hour and a half of hard intense mathing with one kid right um and so because it's just draining and then every you know the other some other kids are younger and they literally can't do anything and so i thought you know i can spend some time on this subject but this is 
it's become too much. Mm -hmm. Prayed. I had an older neighbor who was a retired teacher. I've mentioned this before. Who I approached about, could we hire you to kind of like help her a couple days a week in this? She was so blessed that we asked, Mm -hmm. was like, of course you cannot pay me. This was like a source of joy for her. Mm -hmm. Just came in and that was, she helped for like that semester. Mm -hmm. And then it it was a moot point. Like it was right. The the child was doing it on her own then, and we were just kind of back to our own rhythm. But it's like the Lord provided. That's right. In that in that moment where it was like I I don't know how I can do this with her and do He provided, and then it was just a non issue. Right. Um, right. And so I don't know that. I guess uh, the biggest thing, and I think the reason your homeschool was so successful ultimately Audrey is because you were asking the Lord to, to cause your effort to prosper and bear fruit mm. because you were relying on him and it's in scripture over and over like blessed is the one who trusts him who puts their trust in the Lord mm-hmm. like that that is what blesses what we put our hand to and I'm going to go into just a little bit of how we structure our day and sure. how we have in the mm-hmm. past but I do think until you understand that, that it does not matter. It doesn't matter if you have every color-coded drawer and the perfect space to work in, the sun-filled room that each student has all their supplies, and you've got juniors and naps going at just the right time, and the perfect curriculum. It does, it does not matter if you are not asking the Lord to bless what you're doing. Right. Because right. He is the one who brings the fruit about Um, I'm doing tomorrow. I've got the fours and five Sunday school and the, Mm -hmm. um, the lesson is on David and Goliath. And I, I, which is just like, Oh man, what a fun, what a fun week. So one of the little things we're going to do is said in the lesson is you, you have a rock and you set a rock down and then you have a penny and you roll the penny against the rock to see if you can make the rock move. And the penny, of course, just like bounces off the rock and the rock stays still. And we're going to try that a few times. And then I'm going to hold the penny in my hand and just push it along the ground until it hits the rock and keep pushing it. You ask the kids, oh, do you think the the rock will move this time? Mm -hmm. And it's like, yes, it will move that time. Is it because of the penny? No, it's because I'm pushing the penny. (laughs) And that's kind of an illustration Mm -hmm. of the Lord using David, right? And his slingshot to kill Goliath and to take down this taunter of his army um, and the God of that army. And so when we're homeschooling, we can just be a penny just smacking up against the rock, not getting anywhere unless we have the Lord's strength Mm -hmm. um, and his blessing on what we're doing, then it's vanity. Yeah. um, yeah. Yeah, and anyway, to realize, too, that God cares more than we do about, you he know. He does. He <laughs> loves these children. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And he wants them to thrive. And he wants them to know him uh-huh. and love him and have a relationship. And he loves us. Right. And and it's like he wants our good and their good. So, and he just, and he says, ask for wisdom. Right. 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 And I'm going to give it to you. So we, these are, these are not things that we need to try and like claw out of God's hands. These are gifts that he wants to give us because he's a good father, Yeah, but we need to come to him for them. Right. Right. We need to go to the source because we live in Babylon right now Mm -hmm. and we're hearing all of these other things that we need for our happiness, for our success, for our kids success. And we don't even realize, and I, I think that this is true for me, what, we're drinking in and what we're thinking are what we need to see our kids do and what needs to be in their lives and what needs to be in our lives and how we need to structure it. We're taking way more cues from the culture than from the word of God. And um, there's nothing like homeschooling to really kind of rip back the cover on what you or desiring for your children. Right. It just makes it so clear what your motives are as you're working with them. And I have one kid that was struggling with something and, and they were, I've mentioned this before, just 
it was taking forever. It was hard working on this one worksheet. But then they were joyfully helping out in the kitchen with me. And it's like, mm-hmm. I was valuing more mm-hmm. this child doing worksheets quickly and easily than being a joyful, helpful, industrious person. Mm-hmm. It's like, whoa, mm-hmm. whose mm-hmm. priorities are those? <laughs> that's insane. You know, yeah. that's like, that's the world where it's like, well, you've got to check these boxes. Right. And then when you get to check these boxes and you get this certification and you get da 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 and this degree and then, then you can go sit behind the computer twenty four seven for the rest of your life and that's really the meaning and hopefully get a really big paycheck and right. then that'll be important. Right. Um, right. Anyways, and, and I'm not. Hey, I'm in favor of people sitting behind computers for a long. Oh, absolutely. Of time. Like, Jeremy does it and it provides. Point. Yeah, it makes curriculum. Yeah, I I understand the larger point that you're you're making. And it's so true. Because even when you think about it, like the worksheet pages, which I'm not discounting those at all, my kids did hundreds of them. That's not but at the same time, at the same time, I was thinking, where are the worksheets in the Bible? (laughs) <laughs> right and what a tiny piece of their education right right exactly. it's like we're just we are reading together as a family we are discussing things around the dinner that's table. that's right it is we're talking about stuff in the car this is like right you know one little piece. and we have to do it like because you know what we're not talking right. about in the car quadratic equations like we're just not so, <laughs> right. uh, it's not our style there are families that are into those sorts of things but, um, but y'all aren't doing but, that <laughs> no we're not no. that's not our thing we're not going to do you know mass uh brain teasers for fun and that some people <laughs> truly do that and good for them but um so we're going to try and as much as possible, like you said, you don't want them to have those gaps, but we're going to trust the Lord with those That's gaps. That's right. That's no. right. And my kids yeah. know that I was always trying to, I was always trying to like buy things. I would, I would add resources when my kids were young and they remember, I'm sure they remember it. And they, it, it, you know, you live and learn that your kids, there's a lot of things you do that your kids like later make fun of. And that's okay. That's <laughs> right. but well, I, I, my favorite is like buying things. And then just like having them lay around the house <laughs> thinking like, surely they're going to want to come like play with these brain teasers in their free time. And it's like, or yeah, play a math no. game that's supposed to like. Oh, yeah, exactly. You, <laughs> because exactly. I bought those and then I bought I would like buy things. I was like, well, I'm going to make learning fun because I d- really did want to make learning totally, fun, totally. you know, and so I would buy these. Now, of course, they really did enjoy like I had this thing called math. In fact, I still have it. And sometimes I think I need to introduce this to my grandchildren and see if they like it. But some of them liked it. Some of them didn't. But all I'm saying, because it was like supplemental. It wasn't like the main thing Mm -hmm. but um but still i have so many other things are play and talk there were all these like things that (laughs) were supposed to be fun and helpful and i think they were a lot of them were but some of them were just like a bust you know like oh i Mm -hmm. think they're gonna love this math game as much as they love the game risk not happening you know like (laughs) (laughs) or or strategic like and but then realizing that some of the games that they did play and were drawn to those were every bit as educational in different ways as the ones that had had the educational label on it okay so that's that's good now let's talk about you know because how she worded it a day in the life of sorts which yes, I love that yes. because again when I talked about the beginning like the changing dynamic every you know there's a day in the life depending on the ages of the children and how you're orchestrating your school year because it changes and sometimes even now with my years pat I mean my year all these years behind me I find schedules of different years for different children oh, and I fun. and I save them I've saved them and think I'm going to show this to my kids you know to prove that they were on a schedule <laughs> you know? uh, so, we did stuff look at this schedule. yeah yeah and uh, here's here's a folder of your work I got it right here <laughs> um you know, I it's funny because this question I was thinking back on the earlier years right and I remember when I just had just Lois in, in first grade. And I went to like Wednesday morning women's uh, Bible study. And there was a point of transition uh, as the kids got older where it was like, oh, I can't necessarily do a, a Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning. Those are just going to be 
hardcore home days. Right. And, and so you just adjust where you, you kind of realize, Oh, I was doing this. And now I've realized that it's too much of a pressure. Point. Right. And right. so now we're going to shift. And that's the big thing I think for homeschooling is you have to one kind of know your personality mm-hmm. and your kid's personality. Like I'm going to say what I did, but this, may not be right, the, right. the best option for people because so for me we had to start out in the morning like and hit it like if, if it was after if it was later in the afternoon like it was not mm-hmm, going to happen mm-hmm. or at least it was not going to happen oh, in yeah. a fruitful way right so we would start out first thing and with my least favorite subject, math. Yep, um, yep. And I mean, I'm sure I'm training my kids to hate math because <laughs> I was like, you know. Well, you like, know we what? I think there's probably some statistic in the population somewhere that's like 5% of the population lives math. And uh, then- <laughs> right. And bless those people. You that's right. You the engineers and we need you desperately. But I, I it seems and like Jordan. practically... <laughs> Yes, and genetically, that I, I mean, I'm certainly not bringing anything to the math table. But <laughs> we get that done first, yeah, and then we move on to maybe our our next most difficult subject, which would be like grammar and right. writing. Right. So that's how we do it, and we kind of end up by lunchtime and after we're doing science and history, and like I love reading their history textbook oh, yeah. around the lunch table, or you know, science like maybe go outside, and right you know, do a little exploring related with that. So I, we kind of, that's how our day goes. And then by, especially as, when they were younger, afternoon was nap time uh-huh. or quiet rest time. Right. So you're older, you, you know, are quietly reading a book. You're younger, you're napping. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're, you're, you're in your rest room time. just for yeah. rest time. Uh-huh. And I would highly recommend for all moms of young kids to institute this especially like and I know I was just talking to a friend and her husband's been traveling a lot and uh it's just he's been gone longer hours in the show that she she can barely get a few minutes alone because they always want and I was like it is not only best for you it is to mark out it's good for them. That's right. For them to go just have that quiet time where they uh, maybe are using their imagination or reading or just relaxing for a minute. So, well, do you remember? Um, do you remember? I think it was when Lois was young and she stopped, um, you know, sleeping for and she sleeping. was awake. And you asked me one time. I don't know if you even remember this, but you asked me, "Is it bad for your?" You know, I don't think you used the term "bad," but the gist of it was. Yeah, but what, I didn't want to just leave her. Right, her room. right. You said yeah, that you. What like do you? You just asked me what I thought about that, and I mm-hmm. and I. It was the same. What you just said. I mean, that was my f- thing. Is you know, ki- the thing is, is we entertain our kids so much, and we're always thinking mm-hmm. we, that we rob their imagination. We rob their just play yes. because I think about the way I grew up, and I'm not saying God chooses our boundaries of our inhabitations, the years we're born, but there was just time where you're just outside looking in the grass blades at grasshoppers, yeah. you know, yeah. because you're yeah. done with school. Cause I went to conventional school, but you're done with school. You've done your homework. You've got some kill time and that's okay. Not to have your mom planning every moment of your day. Mm-hmm. And even the thing with my kids at times when they were done with naps, look, you're going to have two hours in the afternoon where I can regroup and you can do something. And, and if they would say they were bored, I'd say, <laughs> I'd say, well, oh, you think of good. you some chores you can work. Yes, on. you think of something to do, or I will give you something to do. And they're like, no, we can think of something to do. They yeah, would always absolutely. say that, <laughs> say because they knew if mom thinks of something to do, we're not going to like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather be bored. Okay. But there's well, nothing wrong with I them being about, that way. I mean, I'm being like, bored. If you Go ahead. don't enjoy leisure time. You don't have enough work. Exactly. So exactly. That's what I tell them. I'm like, you need more work so that you appreciate not having to be working right now. That's right. Um, and so, that, I mean, we want them to enjoy work, too. Right. I know what you mean. Like, yeah. It, but it's just like, oh, please, please come tell me you're bored right now. <laughs> uh, but I do think, I mean, I think there was a real 
for me, there there was like even a discipline aspect to that work because you have to set that boundary. Mm-hmm. They will push it as far as you let oh, them. Oh, yeah. Push it. Oh, that's right. Um, and so I just think making that time, if you are a homeschool parent with young kiddos, is absolutely vital to the health of your home. You that's reset, right. they reset because you're going to move into dinner time. That's right. And you got to crank out dinner and, you know, do all that and bedtime. And it's a whole nother push there Mm -hmm. at the end of the day. And I just think it's, it is about totally invaluable to have that time. Well, I love um, what you said about um, the morning because, and I've, you know, you encourage um, people homeschool to get it done, get up. And I know that's probably even to this day why I always like have my makeup on first thing because I would just get up and mm-hmm. put my makeup You're on. Ready to go. Yeah. And, um, it, but, but yeah, you get that done. And I, and, and, and again, back in the day, there were no cell phones, there were no that kind of stuff, but still people called your house phone. And I can remember in the mornings, I I would just take it off the hook and I would tell Carl, if you need to call me, the phone's off the hook <laughs> because otherwise it's just a distraction, you know, because at least yeah, I needed th- three yeah, hours yeah. with the kids where it wasn't like I'm on the phone or answering stuff and, you know, that kind of stuff. So I would just take it off totally. the hook. And then you have to wait. He goes, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> you know, the, the well, And that's like the hard thing now, which I'm thankful I, I, I have an Apple Watch to mm-hmm. leave my phone somewhere else while we're doing school right so i still have the watch where it's like oh i need to set a timer for your math bag sure sure you know this or that have that access but yeah i it, having that phone can be a total killer yeah and if you've got multiple kids you're you're teaching if there's somebody's busy working on something you go check on that other kid or That's throw right. in a lo- load of laundry or i mean there is always work to be done and right in the temptation on the phone is yeah way and, way too big and that's not some standard for those who you know those of you who say oh it can be in my room and it's not, i mean it can be with me and that is for important that's yeah, fine so. but at the same time you gotta be focused on what you're doing with your kids and knowing that you're not oh, getting no interrupted way. by that kind of stuff and so you can say because i can remember when my kids were young and i would say with the older ones because obviously they always want me to like stick with them the whole time but i'm saying okay you finish this page or whatever it is yeah. while i go check yeah this child's diaper or while I go I got to read these spelling words to this child and then I'll be back but you keep working till I get back this isn't like oh mom walked away so now I can just like fool fool around (laughs) well and I will tell my kids that then you need to bring that to me yeah you bring your finished product to me and I will look over it and I think that's especially important for the older kids when you're taking a less um, active role in their instruction, maybe mm-hmm. because they really, I mean, bet, they, I think it's healthy. Sometimes I feel like, oh dear, my oldest child is like self educating at this point. It's like, actually, that's a gift. Right. That's a gift to be <laughs> able to, to like read. Mm-hmm. And she reads and she figures things out and she, she learns it and then she applies it. It's like, right. okay, well, excellent. I mean, but you don't want to, as they get older and more capable of doing that then just think, oh, they've got it. Right, 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 right. They need to, you need to look over what they've done. Right. They tell you, oh, we completed our math. Great, let's look over it. Right, right, right. Oh, I wrote that paper. Let's read through it. Um, Because I do think that that's a temptation, especially if you're still teaching younger kids to think they've got it. And, And it doesn't have to be a hard thing for you. It can be their job to bring it to you. I need to see this. So you bring, you know, bring X or Y to me and uh, let's look over it together. Right. Yeah. You'd be surprised even just students who are responsible and sharp things that, they miss. overlooked and missed. And it's like, oh, uh, yeah, actually, I didn't. I meant to do that. I just did it up. But, so, it, but, it, but um, as I get older, it's less time consuming, but you still got to do it, you know? Totally. I mean, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Well, and this is the other morning thing I was going to add. I, um, uh, for some for me, sleep is like, it could be a bit of an idol. I don't know. I just think <laughs> sleep is like the most important thing ever. And <laughs> What well, is like, important? I've well, learned that well, even it more. It's important. <laughs> like my kid, we get, I make sure they get sleep. But for a while, I was just like, they're, whenever they wake up, that's when they're going to wake up. And that's when we're going to get started. And as they got older, it started to be like, well, actually, <laughs> they might be getting enough sleep at this point. And so I... 
I never had like an official start time when they were younger. Right. But as they got older, I actually was like, actually, we're going to meet at the breakfast table at this time. Yeah. And we're going to start with God's word because that was another thing. We were not doing that for the Mm -hmm. longest time. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was like, actually, this is the most important thing you're going to hear today. Right. Is God's word. So we're going to start there. And because I just felt this like desperate uh, sense, like, oh, we got to get through all of our stuff. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's, but it's not, it's, let's actually enjoy what the Lord has for us today. The learning that he has for us, the work that he has for us. And you just, I think starting with prayer and time in the word together Mm -hmm. completely sets the tone for the whole thing. Um, And so that, that's how we start now. And we didn't always. Um, and then the other thing that I did with younger kiddos, like preschool age kiddos, I really never had like a, oh, we're going to wait until that, those younger kids are sleeping, even in the morning, taking mm. morning naps to do school. We just did it. Yeah. And I would have a, a toddler or a baby, just like maybe a baby's in the ergo carrier and I'm mm-hmm. walking around do it. Or maybe the toddler oh, yeah. right there playing with something or grabbing or doing markers on paper. My friend Aaron and I used to send each other videos of like a, a toddler, like walking across the papers and like throwing their body down, and <laughs> that, you know, crying or whatever. And it's like, I, I know <laughs> that people have varying levels of, uh, comfort with chaos and that is pretty chaotic to just have your kid kind of like there roaming right. around while your other kids learning and another and the learning child has different levels of you know ability to focus mm-hmm. but um but their way us, go ahead i'm sorry yeah for that, you? it worked yeah it worked for us and i do think it it even helps that kiddo like, I don't know, maybe I'm training them to, to be able to work in a very chaotic environment, but it's like, yeah, you can still, you can do your math with your, your sister crying over there or little toddler. You can just hold on for a second. You may not be getting that toy right away. So I think for us, it it worked out and, and it kind of kept the trains (laughs) moving. We didn't have to wait for, because then the other thing is you're a slave to the nap. Like, Oh, if they don't, sleep for you know however long like this is going to blow up our whole day it's like no i'm not we're not going to let it blow up the whole day it's like you're you're great thing audrey like just because they're crying i don't i'm going to butcher it like you don't have to be crying the baby needs and i I, be the only one who's crying yeah and it's like okay you're upset right now and uh we're going to tend to that you can just hold on a minute obviously it's something right we're talking about if you know they're fine and they're just being a wine bucket they're fine they're just being a wine bucket (laughs) exactly yeah well and that honestly that maxim applies to your kids in the school day too older kids yeah just because they're in a foul mood right and and they're upset about whatever that you don't need to get down in the mud with them because that's what they want they want you to change the environment and change the assignment and change what they have to do if they uh if they pout enough you know you'll be annoyed with the pouting and you'll change it push you enough (laughs) exactly exactly yeah and so i think just realizing like huh they're in a foul mood today and like, Lord, give me the strength to not join them in that, but to, but to be like their loving authority. It's like, so I'm going to help them move out of that hopefully, but. Or just yeah. say, you know, you can do that with a mood, but you're still going to do it. And so go do yeah, it in your room happening. with the mood, you're, you know, but yeah. you're not going to disrupt or, us. Or I even <laughs> like to be like. Uh, I like to add things sometimes. Like, oh, <laughs> there you oh, is that? Well, you, okay, well, I can see that, you know. We now need we need 10 more sentences. Like, you need to write 10 yeah, sentences about that need, mood. We need a few extras. <laughs> well, in the last, the, I've had two other things. So we, in our neighborhood, we have a nice little block. And if I have the morning starting out with sisters being kind of nasty to each other, I'm like, huh, you guys are just picking at each other. You guys need to go take a lap together and work this out. <laughs> yeah. And if you haven't worked it out by the time you've done a lap, you're going to just keep going until you figure out how to, 
you know, they, so I think that's a great, just like, oh, okay. Well, I obviously need a little outdoor exercise. Like, that is on out. excellent because that is the very thing that I learned from my mom when, when in a different way, because if my brothers got, and mostly it was more, I saw it more with my brother. She probably did it with me too, but you know, I was, I was more perfect, but I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but but I just remember when there was like all this bickering and energy and she did make you know she was like okay you're pulling weeds she would make us be exhausted where we're we're too exhausted to argue you know yeah. you, you know yeah. if you're tired you, you it's like I don't have the energy to fight with you <laughs> <laughs> they, they totally. But she would make them go, yeah. Like, <laughs> She'd make us work in the indoors. hot sun. <laughs> yeah, there's something about being indoors too much and just like ha- not having enough to do. That is That does not breed uh, righteousness, I don't think. <laughs> I guess that's um, why schools ended up implementing recess. <laughs> right, right, Get exactly. Outside. Get outside, work it out. Well, and this is another <laughs> one I did recently with like, uh, kids kind of picking at each other. This is, obviously is not helpful for your school day, but they were telling me about what this one did and what that one did. And I said, you know what? I would actually love to hear about this, but I'm going to have to ask you to submit oh, um, your side it. of the story in writing. I love it. I love so, it. I love it. I love it. We did that too. <laughs> oh, the, the, I was like, oh, did you? I'm like, I, it felt like such a stroke of genius. And I got back treasures that oh. I will keep these it was letters plus diagrams <laughs> and the, <laughs> the drawings were oh just so and and so and that is actually even for yourself as the mom who's receiving this information such a more delightful way to receive it you know what I mean versus I need- like two kids being like but da, 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 da. it's like Oh, I, I need to send you papers. I need to send you copies of Jeremy and George. Oh, I would love versions. that. I would love that. Because <laughs> when I come, I have them. When it's like, but Jeremy and but well, Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you know the writers of the Gospels from their perspective. <laughs> Oh, exactly. Oh, that is hilarious. (laughs) Oh, I need to do that. That's awesome. And that Uh, is so good. That's so good. And, you know, and and speaking to, because you've spoken to some of these things as we've been talking, but like this particular woman who wrote, you know, a 9-5. And the other thing is she just transitioned into homeschooling. So, but I was thinking about what, well, what you just said about, you know, she has a one-year-old and what you just said in terms of the morning thing. And I was, you know, like, just go ahead and get the school you know, do your school with the kids while the baby's up and fresh. Cause usually typically when I know one, sometimes they still take a morning nap and an afternoon nap. It just depends on when they drop that it morning depends. nap. Yeah. But yeah. as you progress through that, there were things that I did when I had little, little ones and I was homeschooling the older ones. What you did. Yes. I, there'll be times where they'd just be like, walking around and doing whatever and we're just saying hey you know and and talking to them through it sometimes Mm -hmm. Uh, but then Mm -hmm. uh, some other things I did is I would like you know set up like uh, I put them in the high chair sometime and just let them have it pudding Mm. you know and and, uh, you know and uh pudding or jello or just fun stuff that it wasn't too bad if they got got it in their mouth but they're playing with it like it's but it's Mm. okay to eat it because they're going to put like it's art yes exactly and they uh, yeah where it wasn't going to be something that was a huge like and it depending on what i gave them you know i might i put like a you know something underneath you know on the floor i remember one time a woman you know, who was very, um, you know, she was very orderly and neat. And, you know, and I just remember she was over at my house one day. She didn't homeschool, but she was there in the morning. I don't remember what, even why she stopped by. I don't remember any of that. But I, but what I do remember was her seeing Grant in the high chair doing just that. And I had like a big blanket or something that I didn't care if it got messy underneath it because I just was going to let him have at it. And uh, But I remember her just kind of looking at that and sizing it up and just, because he's just in his diaper, you know, he's got this stuff all over his like chest and everything. <laughs> and I'm like, and I had been working with the other kids. I think Grace Anna was 
playing with her dolls, but I was schooling Jeremy and Jordan. But I just remember her like sizing up the situation and, you know, like, I don't want my kid to have pudding in his hair or whatever. But (laughs) but it was okay and it worked and it helped occupy because Grant was just like wide open with. So it was like good to give him something that he could really be sloppy at, but it was contained Mm -hmm. sloppy. You yeah. Know. So well, there's that some stuff. People who like rotate kids out where you could even say, oh, here, you take a 10 minute break and play with oh, you know, yeah. read your brother, sister, a book. And then and I'm working with your sibling and then we'll, you know, switch. So I think that can be sweet, too. Just to absolutely the kind of switch off and spend a little time with their younger sibling. Yeah. Um, and that's but, another way to and, and they're learning. Totally, totally. Yeah. Or and even just be like, we're going to go outside mm-hmm. and we're going to we're going to take it to a park. And so I'm going to exactly. be pushing, you know, them in a baby swing and you're going to sit at this thing where you're in earshot. It's like, oh, you don't you read me the problem. What is it? Let's talk through it or whatever. Um, I think just being a little creative looser mm-hmm. and creative. Yeah, yeah. And asking the Lord for these like for inspiration and creativity and talking with other, finding other, you know, older or maybe homeschool moms who've been through it say, Hey, how did you, how did you do these early years? I think another thing, just thinking about getting school done and chores done. um, I think there's a couple things there. One, I, I realize you do have to tweet over the years what else you have going on. Mm-hmm. Oh, because it's, yeah. you may have extra things in your life that you actually need to go ahead and, and cut out. And I'm not saying like, don't fulfill your obligations or whatever, but you, you just realize, okay, I've been doing X or attending Y and I actually need to stop right doing that because it's putting too much pressure on our home day or on, you know, getting things done at home. Um, so I, I realized at one point Tuesday afternoon, I mm-hmm. could not have anything on the calendar Tuesday afternoon right. because Tuesday was our most intense day. And so I needed to stop making other plans Tuesday afternoon because that the pressure of the schedule having to end at a certain time yeah. specifically just, just it made me less patient. It was not good. Well, that's um, good, Cassie, so because you're looking yeah. over the co- whole course of your week and thinking through at this particular time, the ages of my children, what I need to accomplish. This is how I need to order my way, yeah. order my week. That's like looking well to the ways of your household. And I like what you said mm-hmm. too, in terms of what I can do. And I always kind of called it negotiables and non-negotiables, you know, looking through mm-hmm. these mm-hmm. are the, these are the non-negotiables. I cannot. I cannot skimp on these areas. And you, you list in there and what the scripture says in terms of our responsibilities to our husbands and our children and the, the, the ages that they are and the home being my primary focus. And then there's my church. You know, the Lord wants me to be involved in my church. That's a command mm-hmm. of his. It's And I'm to mm-hmm. employ my gifts in the body. So how can I best employ my gifts in the best way? Even at this stage of my life with children, and for me, I was I would always just teach in their classes. You know, I would just fulfill roles where they were. You know, using mm-hmm. the gifts that God gave me. So there's those non-negotiables, but then there's all these things that fit into the negotiable realm. That would this be good at this particular time for us? Mm-hmm. Can we do this? Mm-hmm. Can we work this into our schedule? Does this fit with my husband's um, responsibilities and what? How I need to be avail- available for him and for him to have time with the kids. And that is part of our job, whether we're homeschool yep. or not, to yep. to look well to Manage the ways. That's right. Yes. And look well. Yes. And what do they need now? And some of the things they need this year, that's not going to be so important next year. Or the stuff that, that we had to eliminate last year, we could ease in the schedule this year. And a lot of that, as you already pointed out earlier, a lot depends on our temperaments and our personalities and how, you know, that's not our you know, our focus, but to say, how does this fit? How will this work in, in our and family's our life? That's being, right. Exactly. Being aware of them and responsive to what's going on in their lives. And like, mm-hmm. how can I help him? How yep. can I make our home a place that is uh, a, a peaceful, joyful place for him to be based right. on his, who he is and his personality and disposition and right. to bless his relationship with our kids and our relationship. Yeah, there, there's a lot. There are a lot of factors. And that is why we need 
God's wisdom. Yes, um, that's exactly with these right. Shifting things. Yeah, um, and I, I love that. Yeah. I love even what you you know when you emphasized, uh, and because I, I want to reemphasize it because I thought it was so good when you talked about you know having the afternoon where everybody has some downtime. That's that is just so that's so important because you know. And, you know, I remember one of our elders' wives a long time time ago used the term. She wasn't, it wasn't in reference to homeschooling, but she talked about when you're just like so busy or or you've had a season where maybe you've been traveling or, or you just, you know, it's been intense. She said, it's like you need a stare day. That's what she called it. A stare no. <laughs> day. I t- always think of that because I think today's my stare day. <laughs> I don't do anything but totally. stare. And it's that they, totally. that so they need to stare at the you know a few a couple hours to stare at their walls in their room or something. Well, and there and that's like you might have to be more um, intentional or efficient with other things to make time for you to have that quiet time every day. Sure, so for, like even. Thinking about, okay, meals. I'm going to plan my meal. I, I, when I go to the grocery store on a weekly basis, I, I know roughly what I'm planning for us to have every mm-hmm. night that week. And that's not actually a great way to save money necessarily because you can't like respond to what's on sale. You could, but I'm like a, I'm like a toddler. I'm, you know, one track. I only know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm getting these things. I don't know. No, and that's so okay. I'm not. I'm not running back to the store a bunch. I'm just like, this is what we're having. I've mm-hmm. already either put it in the crock pot or I'm right. already thawing it. And just to like say, okay, so now I have this space and I throw the laundry in. That's And this is not so much for kids with younger or people with younger kids. But we did talk about this earlier, and especially as they get older. Like your kids can be a real help to you in things around the house. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and so, cause we talked about teaching kids to work kind of towards the beginning of the, the podcast and have a lot of ideas in there, but it is a heavy lift to be home all the time, living in your home, using your home and keeping your home orderly. Right. Um, and so I think that is where you one, just employ the your your kids help and say okay your job is going to be to gather all the laundry baskets or mm-hmm. your job's going to be and make it age appropriate and show them how to do it and again that's right. what you would expect right if right. you don't follow up on it there's a good chance it's not going to be done well because they have to be taught how to do it right i still yeah um when jeremy has cleaned the kitchen i've always been like Huh? I should really have him to show me how to do this. <laughs> so much better than when I do it. Um, but, You're welcome. Yeah, it's like these. Yeah, hey, hey, seriously, I know. Um, no, but just like doing things with detail, it's like, oh yeah, yeah that's not going to be a natural thing. And then this is once again knowing yourself uh-huh. with all of the laundry and all of the food and the cleaning and the, the, the vacuuming. You may need to just be more industrious. Yeah. You may be a little lazy. So this is my problem. And it's like, actually, there you can put more effort into doing these things. Or you may need to dial it back a couple notches. Mm-hmm. You may be the person that thinks your house has to look like house perfect mm-hmm. 24-7. And that's like another false idol. And you need to relax a little bit and know, you know what? If you don't get that load of laundry in until later, mm-hmm. like the house isn't going to burn down. So right, I right. Think knowing yourself, and that's something you could even ask someone like, hey, knowing me, what do you think I should kick it up a notch or just like relax on this? Because my mom told me this a long time ago, and I mean, it is stuck with me. You don't have more to do in a day than you can do that the Lord Mm -hmm. has for you. Right. You only have so much that the Lord has for you to do in that day. And that is, it's not more than you can do. Right. So you need to figure out what is it that the Lord has for me to do? Because that can be a very defeating thing to go to bed every night, feeling like you haven't done everything you need to do, even Mm -hmm. though you've been going, running ragged. Uh You need to rest in, okay, I'm going to do the things the Lord has for me. I'm going to be diligent and 
Um, and I'm going to trust him with what I did and did not get done today because, like you said, it's the ne- negotiables and the non-negotiables. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. did the non-negotiables, mm-hmm. and I'm going to trust him with those negotiables. Yeah, um, that's that's good. That's so good. And it's like in pulling away, you know, just some takeaways from a lot of the things that you said, Keswick. There's so many great things, takeaways. But I think, you know, like for this lady and for others who, who are wondering the same thing, it's like, you know, since you're since you're homeschooling, you've trans. I'm talking about this lady now. Transition mm-hmm. to homeschooling. You know, get get the academics done in the morning. You know, whatever you're using, however you're doing it, and and don't have unrealistic expectations. Remember, you're mm-hmm. school you're schooling at home. You're not schooling in an institution. And and just right. remember that that this is you're you're doing this at home. And so there are home things that we do. And so many of even the best schools out there sometimes they like to create the home a home area. You know like mm-hmm. those kinds of things. Um, and so you you have the opportunity to incorporate the home things into the academic learning and that it's okay for your one-year-old to be tooling around and playing with blocks on the floor while, you know, you're doing the lessons with your older children and then going to one, getting, you know, the nine-year-old and getting that him or her started and then helping the five-year-old learning to read or whatever it is that they're doing kindergarten age and then take a break, go read to your, go play blocks with your brother your, your the baby for a few minutes while I do this with such and such and, or and then at those times put the put the baby in a pl- in a place where you can play with pudding or or whatever there's all kinds of options for that you know like set up a a little play I know Grace Anna with Patrick when she was little and she's homeschooling the older kids and she bought one of those like play yards you know she called it baby jail mm. you know because it was get- <laughs> she was getting he was getting into everything and she had was getting the lesson and it was one of those colorful, you know, it wasn't a playpen. It was one of those things. I forget what you call them, but... But so he's in the list, like octagonal. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and she she put interesting things in there for him, and it worked great. And even the times when he was like, "I want to get out of baby jail," she's like, "Well, it's too bad. You got to stay in there a little bit longer, yeah. <laughs> and you can be happy. Yeah, yeah, you can be yeah. happy, and it's okay. And y'all ignore him if he's fussing because we're we got to we're going to go ahead and finish this story or whatever it was she was working on. Yeah. So that's okay, yeah. and just just don't have unrealistic expectations and pull in people and resources when you need it just like you said with this person always do that because you're going to need that the whole time because no no mom can teach every subject all the way through 12th grade she just can't and so you take advantage of other things there um so i don't know those were some of the, the oh and then the last thing you said about the home i think that's great too in terms of doing what you need to do um, um, realizing your, your house is not house beautiful. In fact, I was talking to Grace Anna recently. We were talking, she said, we need to do a podcast on how to live in your house and not worship it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, or just mm-hmm. in terms of because mm-hmm. all the comparisons we have with, you know, yeah. with with all the influencers and everything. And we'll, anyway, yeah. that's a whole nother topic. But I want to close with this and then I want you to pray, um, Cassid. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to be teaching Psalm 138. Uh, next Wednesday, I'm teaching the Psalms at Woman's Life right now. But I love the last. It made me think of it when you a lot of things you were sharing. It just made me think of it um, because right at the end of Psalm 138, Verse 8 says, The Lord will accomplish what concerns me. Your loving kindness, O Lord, ever is everlasting. Do not forsake the works of your hands. And I think about that as David says that. He, God knows everything that concerns us and the things that are important, that are the non-negotiables, they concern the Lord. It's kind of like, He who began a good work in you will complete it. He will do it. And we that's that whole walk of faith that God knows. And He knows about the education of our children. And He knows that so many moms and dads have sensed and, 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 and known that the Lord wants them to take that step from for their children at, at a particular time, and and God will accomplish. He will accomplish what concerns you about your children's uh, education mm-hmm. as you walk with Him. And then and then when David says, "Your loving kindness," His how do you say it? Carl always says it right. The Hebrew said, "You know your your name." Chesed. 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 <laughs> yeah, it's God's covenant love for us, and it, that's what it says it's everlasting. And then when David makes that plea and says, "Do not forsake the work of your hands," he knows God's not. We are the work of His hands. He created us, and He's made us, and He's not going to forsake us. So, with all of that 
said. Um, Kat said, if you want to say anything else, but I do want you to close out our time with prayer. I always like doing that at the end of a yeah. podcast. I'll pray for it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Heavenly Father, we um, thank you for this time. I thank you for just your faithfulness to, to Audrey and to uh, myself in our homeschooling. Lord, how you sustained us. I pray for this mom. I pray that she would um, find a rhythm, that she would find a mm-hmm. rhythm, one that honors you, that has your priorities. Mm-hmm. I pray that for all the moms listening who want their homes to reflect you, that you would help them um, to seek you, that you would cause their husbands to value these things and to encourage them um, in what they're doing, Lord, and that families and homes would glorify you. And we ask this um, in Jesus' name and ultimately for his glory. Amen. If you enjoyed this episode of Rare But Real, be sure to subscribe so you'll be notified when a new episode is posted. And share this podcast with friends. Follow Audrey on Instagram and Facebook at Mothering From The Heart. And listen to all her messages on the Search the Scriptures app.